Well, hello again, and thanks for joining me for yet another episode in the uh, Fujimi Blade Runner Spinner Model Build Series. Uh, just a few shots here of what we've completed previously. And the last thing I had done was work on these uh, wheel covers here, got them lighting. And then I went through, since our last time we were together, and I went ahead and I also did the black trim around the outside of these wheel covers. Um, got those done up so that they will match the rest of the uh, black stripes on the car body. Uh, you'll also notice on the wheel covers here, there's a little black patch here between the two lights. So I've gone and I've painted that in black as well to match the model. And you'll also notice there's like this reflector area right here. Um, I found this reflector tape on Amazon, really thin stuff, looks really nice. And I cut little pieces of it out and stuck it on there so I have the reflector section on the front of my wheel covers as well. And here they are on the body of the car, all glued in place. I've also attached them to my board on the inside to power them up. And you can see when I hit power, all the lights come on together. The wheel covers the center light the dash lights interior lights everything comes up now also on the uh, wall of the cockpit I've added some more stuff um, I got some little photo etch piece greebly pieces left over from other kits that I've got here and I'm gonna go ahead and add a few more photo etch greeblies in here like a little vent up here on the top behind this hose uh, who knows, maybe an air conditioning vent or something back there. Just another little piece here that could be some type of electronics. And just some other little greeblies I've attached to the wall. And here's how it's looking through the uh, windows, looking down. And you can see that vent back here and a little piece underneath it that I've done. And then I also added another little photo etch greebly back here just to add more stuff, make it look like there's a lot of things going on, a lot of components to the inside of the car. I also had a couple other little vent looking greeblies that I added to the uh, footwells on the underside of the car. And then we've got the side mirrors. Um, the filming miniature did not have side mirrors, but the actual car they get into in the shot does. So I'm going to go ahead and add them. Um, I'm going to use this chrome marker here from FlyC and um, just paint the mirrors here with this chrome marker. When it dries, it's very shiny and should look like mirrors. And you can see there how shiny it looks. It looks really good. You can see a reflection in there. And it actually does look like little tiny mirrors. And then I just went ahead and I glued those on in place on the front of the car here and you can see how they look there they definitely look like rear view mirrors or side mirrors rather and you can see reflections when I move behind there we've also got on the bottom side these two open hole vent areas here um, I want to fill those in with something so that you can't see the interior of the car and I've got this refrigerator air filter here that I just replaced recently and I noticed the fabric looks kind of cool it looks like a screen grate or something like that so I went ahead and tore this filter apart and I'm going to go ahead and cut a section of this out and use it to put inside there and I've got those two little pieces cut out here that I'm going to go ahead and cover these holes with and they're just going to fit over the area just like so and I've gone and I've glued those in position, just some Elmer's glue, just to hold them in place. And from the underside, you can see how they look. They look pretty cool. I like it. It looks like there's some type of material in there, filter or some type of grate inside there. And then we're moving on to these side areas on the car. These light up in the movie. And you can see it in this shot here and in this shot here. I want to light them up. Um, these are the decals that go on the side and those again in the movie light up yellow and red and I would like to have mine light up so I've been trying to think about how I'm going to do this. I'm going to try sanding this down. Sand it down no matter what. 
um, and I did sand it down so whether I can light it or not I think it would look nicer with the decal white rather than blue but I sanded down both sides and what my plan is is I would like to try to put a Cobb LED strip behind here and just have it shine right through the plastic since it's thin enough so I need to sand down the interior as well and I've gone and I've done that now sanded down both sides um, the Cobb LED should be bright enough that it should just shine right through the plastic since it's just an opaque white and I've got a cool white Cobb LED strip here um, I've shaved down the one side here um, and I'm shaving down the top of this protective area to get it as thin as possible so I can get it as close as possible to the interior body of the car and then I'm just gonna go ahead and do a quick little test here and I'm just gonna put it into position it'll fit I'm gonna have to kind of center it up I can't really make it longer because it'll be too long so here's a little test of it and lights up rather nicely actually um, I like the way that's looking a little bit of light leaking I can take care of though uh, especially right here a little bit where it's coming through the edge of the strip itself and I can fill that in with some putty and then do a little paint over that um, just using a sanding stick here you can see you know just covering up that edge how the side of the car lights up really nice and smooth actually so I'm pretty happy with how this is gonna probably work so I've got my Cobb LED here I curved it a little bit um, so I can try to minimize the amount of light leak from the uh, outer edge and that'll also kind of contain it the light keep it focused on the body and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply some of my micro crystal clear on here and use this as the adhesive to glue it to the body of the car that way I can just smash it right into the interior it'll dry clear and the lights will shine right through the body of the car that I've sanded down so I'm gonna go ahead and secure that and push that into place here until it dries and it's dried now then I've gone and added some putty around the edges just to seal it all in and you can see the putty inside there and I'll paint it blue and I've gone and I've painted it all the same wildflower blue as the rest of the car so you shouldn't really notice it at all and there it is lit up glowing rather nicely I really like the way that looks um, and with the putty and the paint on the interior you can see there's no light leaking at all on the underside but the light is on and working you can see there it's still on and no light leaking on the outside either so that's looking really nice I also had to shave down just a tad of the underside of the car here to allow for that Cobb LED to slide in there and here it is with both sides on you can see both of them working there right side and left side they both look really nice and of course the tail lights and now we come to the top light of the spinner um, one of these lights is supposed to attach to that little nub there on the top but I want to light that up of course so I'm gonna cut that off there with the blade and I've gone and I've removed it and then I drilled a hole and I've lined the interior with tin foil so I can light up the sides shine through the plastic like I did on the sides of the car um, I've also drilled a hole in the front this part I'm not going to use but I drilled a hole in the front for the LEDs for the top and this is for the Cobb LED to light up the inside I've also laid down a piece of tin foil here to reflect the light around inside to come out the sides and then I'm going to go ahead and attach my Cobb LED here and again this will light the top portion those white sides and it'll glow through the opaque white plastic 
just like it did on the sides of the car and I've got my wires run down through that hole there and you can see how it lights up so I have three LEDs here 0402 SMD LEDs that I'm going to pull down through the top here and these are going to be my rotating lights and I'm going to use chaser light sequence to make those rotate and I have those glued into position here uh, you can see again the tin foil in there to light up the edge here and then I've got my three LEDs fed through to the top I'm going to feed them through this hole here I'm going to feed the entire piece down and set that in place and you can see when I apply power the sides light up look really nice just like the side of the car did and then I have the three LEDs up top which I'm just testing to make sure they work and all three of them light up just fine and I've created another power board in here this powers up the side lights the top lights and the tail lights and everything now on the car that's just basic lighting all powers up together no problems whatsoever everything's looking really nice at this point so it's time to move on to figuring out the police lights. All right, so I've got a breadboard here all set up with all my LEDs to test my coating that I've been doing for the Arduino um, trinket board. Those of you not familiar with these breadboards, this is a solderless breadboard. Um, this is how you test your LEDs and circuits. This leg, the blue leg, all the way down is negative. This leg all the way down is positive. So anything plugged into here will get positive. Anything plugged into this leg will get ground, assuming you plug ground and positive into those in the first place. These legs, they run this direction. So anything plugged in, like this resistor plugged into this leg, anything plugged into any of these legs will react with that resistor. This resistor is also plugged into this hole here which means it's connected to the ground of this LED and will send a signal to that the other leg of the LED is connected to the positive side and will get positive these are the probes these are how you connect things you plug them into the holes to connect them between other items this is a USB power board. Uh, you see me use these in many of my models. I use these to power my lights all the time. So I want to attach my power board here to this breadboard. So I use these little pins. These little pins you can push into where you want them to connect. And let me get this one set. And then what this allows me to do is I can basically plug in my power board here. We've got the positive pin here and the ground pin here. Then anything in this leg will get positive. So if I plug in the positive wire here, I can plug it into this positive leg and that will run down the entire length of the board. So this positive leg, actually I got that in the wrong one here, let me move it. It's this leg. So the positive will go through that probe into the other leg. Then I can plug my ground leg into this. This is connected so that it will receive ground from the power board. And the other end of this, I'm going to plug into the leg with the resistor right here. Then that will send ground to this end of the resistor, go through the resistor, and then into the ground leg of the LED. And then the positive from the board is going to the positive leg of the LED. I am no expert at this by any means, just self-taught from watching videos on YouTube. But I've got this hooked up now, um, and if I plug USB power into this power board, the LED lights up. And again, 
That's because I have ground going to this leg, ground going to this end of the resistor, through the resistor to the ground leg of the LED. And then I've got the positive going through this probe down the positive leg to the leg of the LED. So I hope this gave you a little bit of insight into what I'm going to do now. So again, this is my board that I've been doing to test all the lighting. This is my Trinket Pro Arduino board. I've got a positive going down this positive leg, feeding all of my LEDs positive. Then all these ground legs are coming from pins on the board which will feed the signals to the LEDs telling them what to do. These three here are flashers. So the trinket board will send signals out the pins through the ground wire, essentially turning the lights on and off, connecting ground and positive together to let the electricity flow through them, making them light up in whichever way I program in the trinket. This yellow one here is kind of a two pulse flash, and then these two just kind of flash alternating. These three here is a chaser to simulate the rotating light for the police light. It's going to rotate underneath these plastic pieces like so to simulate the fact that there is a light rotating underneath there. And I did that as a chaser light sequence. And if I turn it on, there you can see the lights running. So you can see my different patterns of police lights there, the chaser light. These are obviously not the LEDs I'm using. I'm using the little SMDs, but this shows you the patterns of what the lights will be doing. Again, this is the trinket board. So pins three, four, and five, those are going to the flat ones that are just flashing. Pin 10, 11, and 12, those are going to the chasers and running them in sequence, chasing each other. And that simulates the rotation. You can kind of see how that works. With the little SMDs, they'll be angled out more so it'll look more like it's rotating around. And I'm going to change some of them by just changing my pins. Right now it's this way. If I change my LEDs the other way, I can change them any of these directions, moving the LEDs rather, but keep the same program. And by changing the LED positions, it'll change the rotation. And I also did a little cheat sheet for myself so that I can see what pins are I'm planning on using for which lights. So I hope this has given you a little understanding about how this works and what I'm trying to accomplish and how I'm testing to make sure everything is going to work before I actually put my LEDs inside the model. And I'm also going to show a little bit of my sketching and how that works. So with my coating now working, I can move on to these lights on the top here. Um, this is the little red housing. I want the LEDs to fit inside here, inside this little area. I've gone and I've marked each LED as to one, two, and three for the sequence in which they will flash so I know which LED is which. And here's how it looks with the red cover on. And it does look like the light's rotating inside there. So we're going to move on to the light bars here and I need to drill holes in these little areas for the flat lights. So I'm going to go ahead and use this little quarter millimeter drill bit and start drilling some holes out and then increase the size as necessary to fit the wires through for the LEDs which will go inside the blue and red flat lights. And I've got all those holes drilled out as you can see. Uh, the larger holes are for the chaser lights. These are the light panels, the red and blue light panels that I need to put LEDs in and I need to drill a hole through this area and the center. So I have a bit here, number 78. Again, I don't know what it is, but I drilled down through that piece and then I've also drilled in through the center and connected them together to run the wires through. And here's an 0402 SMD that I've run through. Um, there's a little hole there, as you can see. When I was drilling, they kind of met up together. But I'll just fill this hole in with just a touch of putty, and you'll never even notice it. And here's how it'll look when it's attached to the light bar. The model kit comes with this little piece here. 
and this is what the uh, rotating light housings attached to they attach to the top of that and then the bottom of this attaches to the larger holes in the uh, bar here and it holds them in place like so uh, because I'm gonna run LEDs inside this little red housing I need to run wires through so I have this little piece of shrink tube that happens to be the same diameter as this model kit piece and I can run wires through it and then through this hole into the red housing. So I'm going to go ahead and run my three LEDs through this shrink tube and then I'm going to use some of my crystal clear as glue to hold the LEDs in place in the shrink tube uh, again because when it dries clear the lights will shine through no issue and I'm just going to push these guys in and let that micro crystal clear dry and you can see the three LEDs inside the uh, shrink tube there. So I'd like to conceal my wires as much as possible so I've gone with this light bar and I kind of ground out a little trench on the underside to push the wires of the LEDs in to conceal them as much as I can. I know they'll be visible. Um, but I've gone and I've attached all the panels and my little chaser bars into the light bars and of course I have all these wires hanging out the bottom. You can see my little chaser LEDs in the top there. So I've bent the wires and run them, glued them in place, um, and then I'm going to do a little test here to find out which LED is which so I know how to mark them. And I, oh, that's not good. Okay, that was bad. Uh, I forgot to attach a resistor before I tested that LED. Well. That's really unfortunate because now I'm going to have to dig that LED out from my little chaser LEDs and replace it with a new one. So that's going to be a bit of a pain, but um, I will go ahead and do that off camera. So I'm going to test the rest of them. Here's one. That's the middle rear panel. Here's one of my chasers. There's another chaser LED there. Then we have the right front panel. And of course this was the one I fried, which I will replace. So now that I know and I've marked them, I put some tape covering the LEDs here in the panels, piece of tape covering that rear LED. And I've used some liquid latex to cover the chasers so that I can paint the entire light bar. And so I've gone and I sprayed the whole light bar black, filled in silver on the inside of the panels for reflection. Um, again, also painted the rear panel with some silver paint inside as well. I'm going to leave my wires black. Um, they're going to be exposed a little bit. And there's my chaser LEDs out the top. But it's all looking really good so far. And then here they are with the uh, colored lenses in place and the colored chaser housings. And then I'm going to give it a little juice here. And uh, here is how it's looking. I am extremely happy with how this is turning out. The flashing looks great. The rotation looks really good. I'm very happy with how this is turning out so far. And this is the second light bar. I've got the red and blue lenses, but this one I want to be just clear white. So what I've done is I took the red lens that was supposed to be on that one and cut out a little piece of clear plexi the same size. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I beveled it on the inside and I'm just going to drop my clear plexi lens into here to make a clear white light. And that'll be my burst pulse light. And there we have the second light bar up and running. And again, I'm really pleased with how this is turning out. I'm very happy with how it looks. It's looking great. So this has been 
a decently long video so far so I'm gonna end it with this uh, next video I'll finish up the light bars getting them installed doing the decals finishing up all the final touches on the car such as the wheels and the glass over the cockpit so um, I'd like to thank you for watching and until next time see you later Hey, if you like watching my videos, please feel free to give them a like. And so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, click subscribe.